Sermon 3 Those Who Enter Into the Most Holy Exodus 26 chapter verses 31 through 33 You shall make a veil woven of blue, purple, and scarlet thread and fine woven linen. It shall be woven with an artistic design of cherubim. You shall hang it upon the four pillars of Achaia wood overlaid with gold. Their hooks shall be of gold upon four sockets of silver. And you shall hang the veil from the clasp. Then you shall bring the ark of the testimony in there behind the veil. The veil shall be a divider for you between the holy place and the most holy. The Materials of the Tabernacle The tabernacle was a small fold-up house covered with four kinds of coverings. It was made of various materials. Its walls, for instance, were made of 48 boards of acaya wood. The height of each board was 4.5 meters, that is 10 cubits, which equal 15 feet, and the width was 67.5 centimeters, which is 1.5 cubits, which is 2.2 feet. All the boards were overlaid with gold. The coverings of the tabernacles were made of the following materials. The first covering was made of curtains woven of blue, purple, and scarlet thread and fine woven linen. The second covering was made of goat's hair. The third covering was made of ram's skins dyed red. And the fourth covering was made of badger skins. As we have already examined, all the doors of the tabernacle were woven of blue, purple, and scarlet thread and fine woven linen. The colors of the four threads used for the veil door of the most holy manifest the works of Jesus Christ that have saved people from sin. As these four colors are the light of truth manifesting that Jesus Christ would give us the gift of the remission of sin, they are something for which believers are utterly thankful and grateful. The materials of the doors of the holy place and most holy. The materials of the doors of the holy place and the most holy were fabrics woven of blue, purple, and scarlet thread and fine woven linen. All the doors of the tabernacle were made of these fabrics. One would come upon the veil of the door of the Most Holy after passing through the door of the tabernacle that led into the holy place. The door of the Most Holy shows us that the Lord has remitted our sins with his four ministries manifested in the blue, purple, and scarlet thread and fine woven linen. The blue, purple, and scarlet thread and fine woven linen used for the holy place and the most holy place are a shadow revealing that the Messiah would come to this earth, be baptized, shed his blood, and thereby complete the works of salvation. Among these, the blue thread is the shadow that manifests the baptism that Jesus would receive, and the scarlet thread is the shadow of the sacrifice that he would offer for the sins of the world that he took upon. To wash away our sins, our Lord was baptized and bore the condemnation of sin. 
This is what the veiled door of the most holy implies. The floor of the tabernacle. The tabernacle was built on plain sand, the ground. The ground here refers to the hearts of people. That the floor of the tabernacle was made of sand and ground also tells us that Jesus came into this earth in the flesh of a man to blot out the sins of our hearts. Because Jesus went experienced all the weaknesses of mankind, he washed all their sins with the baptism that he received and the precious blood that he shed on the cross. Our Lord came to this earth to shine the bright light of truth to this world and resolve mankind's fundamental problem of sin. Jesus is the God of creation who made the whole universe and all things in it. And he is the light of salvation who came to this earth to deliver mankind from all their curses and sins. The Pillars of the Most Holy The pillars of the Most Holy were made of four columns of Achaia wood. In the Bible, the number four means suffering. The pillars of the most holy shows us that people cannot be saved unless they believe in the shining light of salvation manifested in the blue, purple, and scarlet thread and the fine woven linen. They manifest, in other words, that we can discover the bright light of salvation by believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit fulfilled by God himself through his suffering. Whoever wants to enter into the most holy and stand before the presence of God must believe in the shining gospel of the water and the spirit, the gospel of salvation that God has prepared. But those who come to God without believing in the gospel set by God will face his fierce wrath. Those who stand before God must have the faith that believes in the bright truth manifested in the blue, purple, and scarlet thread and the fine woven linen. Through the shining light of truth, all of us must come out to the most holy place where God dwells. The gospel of the remission of sin revealed in the Old Testament is the truth of salvation manifested in the blue, purple, and scarlet thread. The very gospel of the remission of sin revealed in the New Testament was fulfilled through the baptism that Jesus received, the blood of the cross, and his resurrection. We can enter into the most holy only when we have the faith that believes in this most holy gospel. We must believe in our salvation manifested in the blue, purple, and scarlet thread. Hebrews 11th chapter verse 6 states, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. God will live forever. And to give us eternal life, he has blessed us to receive the remission of sins through our faith in Jesus Christ who came to this earth in the flesh of a man, was baptized and crucified, died, rose from the dead again, and has thereby become our Savior. By washing away all the sins of our old selves with his vicarious judgment for our sins, 
and giving our souls the faith that believes in the gospel of the water and the spirit, the Lord has clothed us in the holiness of the absolute perfection. By clothing us in new life, our Lord has enabled us to go before God and pray to him. Moreover, he has also given us the grace of being able to stand before the presence of God and call him our Father. All these things are the gift of God that have come about by the salvation that he has given us. By bringing this salvation to us through the truth of the blue, purple, and scarlet thread, God has made us have the faith that enables us to be saved and to stand before him. If you and I were to die tomorrow, are we confident enough that we would all go to heaven? Let us think about our future for a moment here. When people die, they all stand before the judgment seat of God. This can only mean that we must solve the problem of all the sins we had committed on this earth. How then can we resolve this issue? If we just blindly believe in Jesus as our Savior, Does this not mean that we believe in a mere religion? There was a time in my life when I had been ignorant of the gospel of the water and the spirit and tried to solve the problem of my sins by blindly believing only in the blood of the cross. At that time, I had believed that Jesus was crucified and died for people like myself, and that he had solved away all the problems of sin. But with this faith, I could not solve the problem of the daily sins that I committed. Far from it. It was by believing in the salvation manifested in the blue, purple, and scarlet thread here that my spirit was wholly born again. Are all our sins really blotted out when we blindly believe in Jesus as the Savior? The faith that enables us to go before the Holy God is not found by believing in Him blindly, but it is found by knowing and believing in the truth. No matter how fervently we might believe in Jesus as our Savior, If we do not know the gospel of the truth that has saved sinners with the blue, purple, and scarlet thread, then we just cannot meet the Holy God. It is only when we have the faith that believes in the gospel of the water and the spirit that we can meet the Holy God. What materials of faith, then, constitute the truth that enables us to stand before God as the saved? What is the gospel that enables us to have such a faith? This gospel is the shining gospel of the water and the spirit. Our Lord came to this earth took upon the sins of the world by being baptized by John, was crucified, shed his blood, rose from the dead in three days, and thereby fulfilled his perfect salvation for those of us who believe. If our souls desire to be cleansed of sin, It is only when we believe in the baptism that Jesus received from John, Matthew's third chapter, verse 15, and the blood of the cross, John 19th chapter, verse 30, that we can enter into the bright dominion of truth. Unless we believe in Jesus Christ, 
who has come of the shining gospel of the water and the spirit as our savior, we can never have hearts that are as clean as white snow. Sometimes looking at the weaknesses of our flesh, we lament over them. But even so, because of the gospel of the water and the spirit, we still come to give our thanks to God. For the Lord has blotted out all our sins with his baptism and blood. You and I could never have become holy in any other way. Yet, by believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit, we have become holy. Our Lord has perfectly saved us from sin. By believing in the gospel of the blue and scarlet thread, we can discover the brilliant light of truth that has saved us from all our sins. With the gospel of the water and the spirit, the Lord has made us sound and holy. In Matthew's 19th chapter, verse 24, our Lord said, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Those who are rich in spirit cannot be saved, for they do not believe that they can receive the remission of sin by believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit. Only those who truly are poor in spirit desire to enter heaven, ask for God's help, throw away their own righteousness, and instead believe in the righteousness of God for 100% can receive eternal life by believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit. The gospel of the water and the spirit has shown the bright light of salvation so that we may be able to meet the most holy God. On our own, we can never become holy. But when we believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit given by the Lord, we can indeed become holy and come into the bright dominion of truth. We must abandon religious and doctrinal faith. In John 3rd chapter, verse 3, Jesus himself said, Unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. To this Nicodemus asked in reply, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? John 3rd chapter verse 4. To those who are not born again, being born again only by faith seems impossible. Sometimes even his disciples didn't understand his word and even doubted it. Thus the Lord once said to his disciples, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Matthew's 19th chapter, verse 26. Of course, it is impossible for human beings to enter the kingdom of God with their religious faith. But it is possible for them to enter the kingdom by believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit. Although we cannot become holy by ourselves, those who believe that the Lord came to this earth, took the sins of the world upon his body through his baptism, was crucified, rose from the dead again, and has thereby shown the bright light of salvation that has forever blotted out all their sins, God has enabled them to enter his kingdom. The truth manifested in the blue, 
purple, and scarlet thread used as the materials of the tabernacle is intricately related to the gospel of the water and the spirit that Jesus accomplished in the New Testament. The gospel of the water and the spirit, in other words, is the same as the truth manifested in the blue, purple, and scarlet thread. The blue, purple, and scarlet thread is a shadow of his actual salvation, and the gospel of the water and the spirit is the real substance of this shadow. We can therefore discover the bright truth of salvation through the gospel of the water and the spirit and rest in it. There is peace in the shining gospel of the water and the spirit, like a weaned child playing, resting, and sleeping peacefully in the arms of the mother. It is by discovering the most holy light in the gospel that we have been able to meet the most holy God. It is by believing in the shining gospel of the water and the spirit that we can find the salvation that God has given us. It is only those who believe in this salvation given by God that can receive everlasting rest. In short, Believing in the most holy gospel of the water and the spirit is the only faith that enables us to enter into the most holy. The faith that believes in this bright gospel of the water and the spirit enables us to take the remission of sin as ours. Our Lord came to this earth And with the truth of the gospel that has blotted out our sins once for all through his baptism and the cross. He has now fulfilled the promise he made to us with the blue, purple, and scarlet thread and the fine woven linen. Only those who believe in Jesus as their Savior and in the gospel of the water and the spirit can receive eternal life and enter heaven. Had this gospel of the water and the spirit been preached since 30 years ago, it would indeed have swept across the world. But it is the providence of God for this truth to be spread in the end times. Our Lord said in Revelation that countless people would be saved from their sins in the end times. He also said that there would be many martyrs and that during the time of tribulation, a maraud of people would demonstrate their faith by trusting in the Lord and embracing their martyrdom. Our Lord, in other words, has focused on the end times as the time to harvest many souls. God's plan is for only those who truly believe in this gospel of the truth to receive the gift of salvation from all sins. It is because you have been fortunate enough to hear the gospel of the water and the spirit now in this age, that you have been able to be saved from all sins. I am truly thankful to God for giving us this gospel of the water and the spirit. What would have happened to all of us had we not heard the gospel of the water and the spirit? But it is a fact that even now, not Everyone accepts the gospel of the water and the spirit. This truth is not something that can enter into just anyone's heart. In fact, we see that although there are many Christians throughout this world, many of them neither know nor believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit. 
How then can these people who are ignorant of the true gospel be delivered from sin? That is why God has allowed us to spread the gospel through Christian literature. There are many throughout the world who testify that they have come to know what the gospel of the water and the spirit is only after reading the gospel literature that we have been spreading. They all had known only the blood of the cross before knowing this gospel of the water and the spirit. But now they are thanking the Lord for being able to reach a clear understanding of the gospel of the water and the spirit and believe in it. Also, there are many who testify that they did not know such a great significance was hidden in the fact that Jesus was baptized by John. They now believe in this gospel and cannot thank God enough for it. We can see that like the gospel of the water and the spirit, the gate of the court of the tabernacle was also made of blue, purple, and scarlet thread and fine woven linen. These four colors are are the same as the gospel of the water and the spirit. And in the same manner, the shining gospel of the water and the spirit is also manifested in the screen door of the holy place and the veil door of the most holy. The first covering of the tabernacle, moreover, was also woven of the same four colors, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and fine woven linen. This truth refers to the baptism and blood of Jesus. That is why Jesus declared himself to be the way to the kingdom of heaven. By coming to this earth and saving sinners with the truth of the gospel of the water and the spirit, he has made those who believe sinless. The way to the kingdom of heaven is found in the faith that believes in the baptism of Jesus with the blue, purple, and scarlet thread and the fine woven linen. Jesus has saved us from sin perfectly. Where do you think you can find this truth? If you believe in the baptism that Jesus Christ received and the blood on the cross, you will then be saved from all sins and receive eternal life once for all. What then is the difference between the faith that believes in Jesus Christ somehow and the faith that believes exactly in the gospel of the water and the spirit? Because it is with the gospel of the water and the spirit that our Lord has saved sinners from their iniquities, believing in this gospel is believing in the Lord correctly. Because the Lord has saved sinners with his baptism and the blood of the cross, believing in this Lord as the Savior is the same as being saved from sin by believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit that he fulfilled. Believing in just his name somehow does not mean that we would be remitted of our sins and enter heaven. Rather, it is by believing exactly that Jesus Christ was baptized by John for our sake, shed his blood on the cross for the condemnation of all sins and rose from the dead that we can receive our remission of sin and become God's own people. God allows only those who have the faith 
that believes in the most holy gospel of the water and the spirit to enter the kingdom of heaven. But those who do not believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit cannot enter the kingdom of heaven, for they have not been born again. By believing in the gospel of the bright light of the water and the spirit manifested in the tabernacle, we have been able to receive the most holy faith while living on this earth. Although our deeds are insufficient, when we have such faith, how could anyone say that we have not been made righteous? When we have become holy by believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit, how could we still have sin? Some people wonder how we can say that we are sinless when we are still in the flesh that continues to sin. But this is their own thoughts of the flesh. Those who know and believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit agree that human beings have imperfect bodies and therefore they cannot help but sin until they die. However, they can also believe that they have been forever remitted of all their sins, including the sins that they will commit in the future within the perfect salvation of Jesus' baptism and his cross. Thank God that you and I can share such word of spiritual faith and have the most holy faith while living on this earth is because of the fact that the Lord has given us our salvation manifested in the blue, purple, and scarlet thread and the fine woven linen. It is because the Lord has given us the faith that enables us to believe in the truth of the gospel of the water and the spirit as his gift for us. With our faith in the Lord, we can have fellowship one with another and live our lives while serving the Lord and loving one another. This is where our true happiness lies. We cannot help but thank God for this gospel. How wonderful it is that I could have come to know the gospel of the water and the spirit and believe in it. When I didn't have a wit of knowledge on Jesus' baptism through the word of truth, God has given my heart the faith that believes in the gospel of the water and the spirit. By believing in the gospel of the water and the spirit, we have all received the blessings of heaven. Because of the true gospel in my heart, I preach it with thanksgiving. While reading the Bible, a question began to rise in my mind. Why was Jesus baptized? Because this question kept rising, I sought to find its answers through the Bible, but no one was able to teach me. That was why I had been highly interested in this subject until I came to know the gospel of the water and the spirit. I often read the passage from Matthew's third chapter, verses 13 through 17 especially where Jesus said to John before being baptized, Permit it to be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. But I could never understand its meaning. So I often asked others about the reason why John was baptized by John the Baptist 
in the Jordan River, but I never heard a completely satisfying answer. Nonetheless, God enabled me to realize the purpose of the baptism that Jesus received from John. This was a spiritual revelation for me, as if a blind mind received his sight. Thus, it was after I perceived the meaning of Matthew's 13th chapter, verses 13 through 17, that I came to realize the truth manifested in the blue, purple, and scarlet thread that saved me from my sins. Before I grasped this truth, I had believed in only the blood of the cross as my salvation. But the reality was that I still had sin and therefore was a sinner. At that time, I believed that I could be remitted of only original sin by the blood of Jesus and my actual sins remained in my heart. I had not known the faith that makes one completely sinless. That is, I had been completely oblivious of the baptism that Jesus received from John. However, God illuminated my heart with the bright light of the remission of sin, as light is turned on in a dark room. Ah, the baptism that Jesus received from John is closely related with the laying on of hands of the sacrificial system in the Old Testament. So this is what the gospel of the water and the spirit is. But what then? Astounded by my recognition, a great turmoil began to rise in my heart after realizing this truth. If no other gospel but this gospel of the water and the spirit is the only true gospel, what would happen to this world? I had thought that the faith of the, evang of the evangelicals had been biblically sound. But now, I eventually came to realize that all Gospels other than the Gospel of the Water and the Spirit are the false ones coming from Satan. So, all that I have done from then on is believe and preach that there is no other true gospel but the gospel of the water and the spirit. Some people have criticized me for this. God has shown me a man of many shortcomings, the truth of salvation manifested in the blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and he has also enabled me to believe and preach that this is the real gospel. There are many similar gospels in this world, but there is only one true gospel. This is why I have decided to spread the gospel of the water and the spirit throughout the whole world. When I think about how I came to preach the truth of the remission of sin and how I came to know, believe in, and spread the most holy gospel of the water and the spirit, I come to realize just how greatly I have been blessed by God. All that I did was just believe that Jesus took upon the sins of the world by being baptized by John and shed his blood on the cross, and yet all my sins have disappeared. The gospel of the water and the spirit is the real truth, and I thank the Lord for giving me this gospel.
I am a man who has indeed been greatly blessed by God. Those of you who believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit are also such blessed people. I believe that all these things are the blessings that God has bestowed on me. As the Apostle Paul confessed, But by the grace of God that I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. 1 Corinthians 15th chapter verse 10 I cannot but praise his grace bestowed on me. In all honesty, were it not in God's church, where could you have heard the gospel of the truth manifested in the blue, purple, and scarlet thread? Anyone who hears and believes in the word of the blue, purple, and scarlet thread and the fine woven linen will be cleansed in their heart. What then do those who do not believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit think about this gospel? For them, the truth of the water and the spirit is only tiresome. Do you have the faith that believes in the blue and scarlet thread of the veiled door of the Most Holy? When you hear this word, do not just think that you already know it, but examine yourselves to see if the truth is found in your hearts. Now you must be, in other words, the ones who believe in the gospel of the water and the spirit according to the word of the scriptures. It would be fortunate and blessed if you can come into God's church hear the word of God, and have the privilege to enter heaven. But if this is not the case, if you are unable to know the gospel of the water and the spirit, to have the true faith, and to enter the kingdom of heaven, all from hearing only mundane and trite man-made stories, what benefit could this possibly bring you? If the gospel that you believe in is different from the gospel of the water and the spirit, how could your souls have any relevance before the Lord? The word of God and your faith must be exactly the same, just as the faith of the Apostle Paul and our faith are the same. The gospel of the water and the spirit that Peter believed in is also the same as the gospel that we believe in. 1 Peter 3rd chapter verse 21 I am so thankful to God for allowing us to believe in the true gospel of the water and the spirit in these end times. And when you hold the truth of the gospel of the water and spirit in our books and share it with others, they too will come to receive the remission of sin and thank God in their joy. We must realize that all the patterns and utensils of the tabernacle provide are a detailed portrait of the Lord of salvation who has blotted out all our sins and we must thank God for this truth. We are blessed to be saved and to enter heaven when we believe in the truth revealed in the veiled door of the most holy. Moreover, God has enabled us to spread throughout the whole world the truth of the remission of sin made of the blue, purple, and scarlet thread and the fine woven linen. God has entrusted us with this work. From our respective places of duty, we are faithful to the works, 
that have been assigned to each of us. And God is blessing us for this faithfulness.